I don't know, but I'm, I'm on. already or any political comments either. I guess probably. Would. <laughs> Should we get started? So, okay. No Cal. Hmm. No Kelly. Not yet. Not yet. But we have a quorum. Okay. Approval of the minutes. Is the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Saying opposed, po. No, nay. Carries. Okay, finances. Do have a motion? Changes on the new fiscal year, but I, I can edit it for this one too. Page so looks like yep. that. And then no. it's driftwood slash bud because of the half year of both. That's why I left it. See, and, then, and then go over on the same mm -hmm. line. And when it comes to March, it says 507 to you. They don't look that you had it. No, so that one is from last year, and I keep those numbers in until they're replaced by other numbers, and that really has extended, his opening has extended a bit, and so that will end up being zero dollars. Yes. I had a question too. Mm -hmm. Utilities don't seem low for the bad winter. Have you already paid March or February? No, they're, they're like a month behind, so that's not through, it's not through March, we're just it is in February. Actually. But it is through Fe You did pay February. So. It's being paid now. It's not included. Oh, it's not included so. either. So it's, it's we'll probably be real close to okay. utilities. But we are 75% of budget and 75% of the year. So, all right. You have a motion, Bill? Yes. yes. Motion. I'll give him a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Same motion, nay. Motion carries. Uh, I guess as a side, what you were talking about, maybe you should mention that to everybody. We may not collect April's rent for some of our tenants. Uh, yeah, and so the, um, if we have to, if the if we have to build the Tesco wall around the Union Station building, there are a couple of tenants in there that would be affected, and it's written into the agreements with them um, that the time that they're out of the building, their rent would be abated for that we've prorated. And so that has yet to be determined, but I think it's probably likely um, that for at least a couple weeks that will happen for those and will affect those tenants. So so it's, there's going to be some give on, on, on some fluidity with the, the budget in that regard. Okay. Um, leases? Yeah, so, over, Steve? yeah, I'd be happy to explain. These two kind of go in tandem. A while back, we had for an area on the riverfront um, where pretty much near the old dock structure, a, a um, staging area um, that we agreed to for, uh, I think it was 20 months, 16 months, something like that, with civil contractors. They were um, the U.S. Corps of Engineers contractor for construction, a re, uh, reconstruction of the guide wall. And they um, have been our tenants for a few months um, do not, they no longer, they have found they no longer need it, but we're talking with another contractor who is, has been engaged with the, uh, by the, the Corps of Engineers um, for painting the government bridge. And they would like, we uh, reached out to them and they would like to take over that lease. It would be a separate lease. So tonight what we're gonna do is cancel civil contractors and then engage with Abhi and <coughs> Saboda. Uh, we have two representatives here tonight, um, Matt and Shannon. Um, if there are any questions there with um, the, the painting contracting okay. firm. The only change is really extending out two months additional from what the previous agreement would have been. And so the civil contractors would have gone through October of 2020 at $860 a month rent. Um, the only change really after cancellation and engagement with these guys is extending that out to the end of 2020, December of 2020. And so the agreements that you have in your 
packet are one, the existing one we have with civil to cancel, and then um, a new agreement with them to pick up as of April 1 through. I understand what you're saying, but I think civil needs it another one. Civil and I have talked and they do not. Mm -hmm. The other one for painting of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the bridge on the dam. Yeah, um, the not bridge. The, the bridge on the dam, I'm not sure what you said. I thought it was the government bridge. Yeah. Yeah. The Lock the dam. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, wait, I think we should do two, two separate ones. In the first one, we need a motion to cancel, cancel the, the agree existing agreement with civil contractors. Um, can I amend it? Why is the city attorney signing the lease and the chairman of the levy commission is not signing the lease? Um, when that, did that, 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 I mean, that's, I'm stunned because I have never seen a lease in my 18 years of service or 17 years of service signed by anyone other than the chairman of the levy commission, whether it be the mayor or the chairman himself. So the one with civil was done, and so that was done that way and was approved in that way that mm. you guys did. So mm. Hmm. What do you think? Well, on? we can cancel this one. Let's That's a good that. idea. Let's do that. Did you move to cancel? <laughs> what I'm doing. I could, I'll make the motion. Okay. The Very good. So second. I'll second it. Any other questions? Well, also, this canceled lease that shows going through April 2020 and not October 2020. Was it two months? It was. Uh, so, does that present any issues? The canceled one. This says October 2018, April 2020. Not, and you said it was just an additional two months through the end of the year. I mean, I don't. Unless that would conflict, do you see what I'm saying? The, the it, yeah, I, I it wouldn't it. present no. any kind of conflict. No, the it, the one we're going to do with the new one, we'll call it, is going from April 1st, 2019, through December 2020. Okay. Oh, so by two months you meant instead of 19 months, it's the 21 months, right? Right. Did I misunderstand? Okay. Okay, call for the vote. All those in favor of canceling? Okay, all those in favor of canceling the lease with civil, say aye. 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 Opposed, okay. any sign? Motion carries. No, your point is relevant, Carl. Um, thank you. And the, to follow up on uh, Gwen's question, the term of the new lease is different from the term of the old lease? Yes. Okay. And as noted, and if you would like, I will just re, this was, the, the origin wasn't from, from me on this one, and so I will just change that out and have Chairman Walton sign it. I don't, that's um, not a big deal. Very well. So just. I appreciate that. Thank so you. So we're crossing out Tom Warner and putting my name there? Yeah. Sure. Okay. You, you be, you be chair. Yeah. Tom is still wasn't very good. Designated yes, party. Tom is still the designated party for service. Change the date. Yeah, service would go to, uh, legal service would go to Warner. So this would say Policy would derive from Walton. Well, Riverfront. The or Riverfront, from Riverfront. Not from Riverfront right. Improvement Commission. Thank you. As it says, I mean, it does say the city of Davenport uh, by and through its Riverfront Improvement Commission. Yeah. So it, it's, it's. Okay. Do you have that, Steve? I got it. I move approval. With the changes? Mm -hmm. And with the uh, extension to the, the. Those are already included. To the new period, right, mm -hmm. right. Just making note of it. Yep. I'll second it. D seconds it. Who second? Who moved it? D. 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 Bill. Bill, Bill moved, moved it. it. Oh, Bill He's moved it. Good. Yeah. He seconded it. I got it. Any other questions? Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Post and sign. Glad Shares. to be of help. You're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, good. Good on you. I'll circle back with Ryan.
You're welcome. Okay, projects, Steve. So the first one um, listed there is the Taste of Ethiopia restaurant signage. And so last evening, um, per uh, the, you know, the, the regulations, design review has jurisdiction. Uh, the design review board met and approved um, the sign that you have, the sign rendering that you have in your packet. Um, Taste of Ethiopia um, plans to open in early May. There's not a definitive date. They continue to do their, their build out. Um, but early May is the um, latest indication. And so these are two signs that uh, have been approved by the Design Review Board. And I'd say that one contingent aspect to this is common sense, but that is that they would be affixed to the mortar and not the brick. I mean, it kind of goes without saying sure. that I wanted you to know that it gets that, that kind of level of, of direction and um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the motion said as much last night. So yours is more of a, according to the lease, a making sure that we see it. Uh, and so it just worked out that the design review board met right before we did this one. Yeah, so I'll move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Second. I am second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Same, same day. Have it. Then D, do you want to yeah. kind of give an update on the work group activities, please? Um, in your packet, uh, you have the minutes from the February meeting. Um, uh, in that meeting, we worked on some changes to what I would call the kind of flow chart for lease approval processes uh, and talked about it in March and looked at it at our March meeting. So included here are um, three pages that actually goes through step by step the lease process. So uh, as we um, have existing leases or new leases, uh, this would be on the website understood by those um, who are applying um, and by the internal staff. So the, the uh, lease or the approval process for existing lease make a lot of sense there's this renewal process that starts. It goes to the, our staff back and forth through the city department and review if any of those things are needed, uh, like the attorney uh, rewriting a lease. If it's under three years, it comes to the commission and we usually discuss it and then approve it. And after we approve it, if it's over three years, then it goes to the city council for their approval. So I think that's pretty straightforward, but. We shouldn't be confused again going forward. Um, the next one is a new inquiry. So this is an unsolicited inquiry that comes in um, for a space or a building that we have. Um, that uh, inquiry is going to be directed to our staff. So you can kind of remember when um, there was um, the idea of maybe a miniature golf. It kind of went everywhere <laughs> before it went anywhere, but yeah. it went everywhere. Here, the, the direction... Before it went nowhere. Yeah. The direction yeah. would be going to the, the commission staff. And then Steve would be the shepherd uh, to take it to the city administration and department for their review to kind of figure out what is this, what's the difference, what is it easy, is it simple, what other things have to happen. And then through that process, communicating obviously with us because it's our staff, but also with the city council kind of early on before it comes to the commission for discussion and approval. So we would discuss it, make a decision if we really, if this is a lease we would like to do, and if it is, then the next time we would approve it. And again, if it was over three years, um, it would go to the city council. So th this is kind of taking it away that um, if you're going to lease something on the riverfront, the lease body, the first lease body is here with the commission. And so that's where it would start. Good. Good. Um, the, the next one is kind of the one where, whoa, we would like to actually maybe do a request for proposal to look for someone, either to build, to lease, to come into something new that we might do or want to do going forward. And so 
that process really starts with preparing the RFP itself by the staff and working with the internal departments on what should be in that request for proposal. Um, it would come to the commission to review and it would be this body that would get public input either through a hearing or any number of ways depending on what it is on, on the RFP. Is this what we should be proposing or requesting? So to get information up front, make sure everybody feels that that proposal or request um, is fair and um, doable and we could get prospective people to submit. Then it would go through basic the, the process, but again, overseed by Steve, but you know, the city purchasing department, all the things that you have to do in the city to put out requests for proposals. Those would be reviewed um, by our staff and then reviewed again with the, the city departments that would, that would play a factor in that. Um, communicate it to us, communicate it to the city council. And when it was ready, the proposal side of it ready, it would come for us for discussion. Um, and if we thought that it was, we, that person could actually lease that property or take on those kinds of things, um, uh, we would approve it if the lease was under three years. If it was like a build out where the um, tenant or owner when it longer than three years, then it would go to the city council. So it's broken into kind of two parts, but this sets out how we would request um, proposals. Are we discussing this? Um, sure, I'd like your inputs. So where we are now is what we're doing. I think um, Alderman Griffith's on the committee too and a few others. We're just trying to get little white papers that when we all come together as a commission and a city council, we would present these um, and discuss them there, but uh, early input would be great, Carl. Um, with request to the one you're speaking of now, the RFP uh, proposal, I think the ordinance uh, demands that uh, the Riverfront Improvement Commission will review and recommend prior to consideration by the City Council. So uh, if I could suggest that the City Council might be uh, you know, over here in the, in terms of time and, and process and not necessarily uh, an either or situation. So all proposals are first reviewed by Riverfront Improvement Commission and final approved if under three years and recommended or not recommended to City Council if greater than three years. Okay, so it's the two boxes, how you want us to make well, an arrow. Okay, the, take, the, the, take them from side by side and... Well, because that is how the process I think actually that's what we uh, want works. To, I know you ran out of paper on this side of the page. Carl, <laughs> I think that's what we intend. So oh, very what well. you're saying, it doesn't, it doesn't look like we intended that. I agree, it does okay. not look like that that so, is we'll what has been designed. So I, I just wanted to clarify that, that what is being designed is in agreement with the city's the ordinance box down where it goes straight to the to the commission right here because the and commission then, reviews all proposals and final approves those under three years and refers to the city council with recommendation for or against those that request greater than three years so it appears from the way yeah, the diagram is drawn and, and the way I was yeah. interpreting your, yeah. your, your discussion yeah. Yeah. that it was a, 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 we would have a liked, bifurcation. We would like it to look like this. We would like it to look like that, if okay. you please. Ryan made a good point of it would look like the new inquiry boxes. Exactly. Commission. Yes. Right. Yes. Much that. more like the new uh, unsolicited okay. inquiry. So Thank it you. took us a couple of meetings to do Oh, that. I'm sure it did. <laughs> you know, I think it's, no, forgive me. Let me first thank you for doing this. It's, it's, it makes it much clearer the process that we have been following. So I, I think I, the other thing I would like to say is that um, the commission members and the city council members are very engaged in this process. Um, they come, we have, we have pretty long discussions. Uh, we're now talking about kind of the planning processes, what, what the commission should take on first, you know, what, what's kind of in our bailiwick and they expect. And so we're working on some diagrams and some 
uh, discussion about that. We'll be talking about that again in April. And um, I, I feel like we're coming to a kind of an understanding and a trust and, a, and some really good communication. So it's, it's been a pleasure to be part of the task force. Very productive. Question. Is there some kind of like standard time frame for the task force proposal or that we would I guess make it public we know and that we're seeking proposals for particular spaces that are open? Or at least there, there are. I mean typically no less than three weeks. Uh, I think the longer time frame is always better so that you can expand, extend your reach. Mm -hmm. so, so is this something that we would possibly go for for vacated premises? in the future? I mean, then that we're fully leased. Is this something we would do, like, kind of going forward for our existing? It could, it could be, um, I'm not making this up, it could be, say, we wanted to get into um, the kayaking business mm -hmm. and maybe have a business come uh, and rent them, okay. you know? Um, it, could, it could be on that level, so it wouldn't, it would, it wouldn't necessarily be a building. It could be when um, Main Street Landing's done and we have a building and we need to lease it for the first time, that that would be a proposal. Um, and maybe somebody coming to us with an idea that we feel that while you might be the sole proprietor to this idea and it's a good idea, maybe this is one where we should go out and seek others that may be able to give as good a terms or, or better terms. So I think it's really gonna be dependent the point of it is is just the kind of understanding the process and where it starts and operationalizing it yeah okay. we're trying to get methods and procedures down yeah, yeah. Okay. so will we get another look at this with the modification or will you send yeah. us uh, the um, modification or the correction i should say i'm thinking we're hoping in another two months that we would meet to so we'll make that modification and then we'll go over everything that we've done so both the commission and, and the city council can see the work product and then say yes, this is it. Right. Thank you. Good. Thank you very, very much. Good. Nice. Nice work. So let's uh, need us to... Yeah, before we start the River Vision discussion, I was thinking, Todd, do you want to explain the task force and the two new groups that are going to be voted on tomorrow night or yeah so there's a resolution before the council uh, was uh, came to the committee of the whole last week and uh, I believe it's on consent agenda will be voted on tomorrow um, and it does a few different things the first thing it does is, is it accepts the Main Street landing landing master plan that it looks like we're about to to see here um, uh, it's accepted by the city council to be used in conjunction with the, the 2004 and 2014 plan to execute Main Street Landing, to, to, to finally make it happen. Uh, the second thing that's included in the resolution is that there is going to be a task force for the uh, regional activity area, or as I call it, the world-class park. So if you guys remember the city of Davenport, the, the council is putting a million dollars down each year towards Main Street Landing as we seek other types of funding, a million dollars a year. Um, the, first, the first action that we did was we did the, uh, the flex lot, uh, which you know, as soon as the water goes down will be completed here in this calendar year. Um, but the second, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but the second thing that, that, that the council uh, wanted to move on uh, next with, and I think I made mention of this during your guys' last meeting, uh, is the regional activity area or world-class playground. So this uh, task force would be made up of uh, DRB, HPC, Riverfront Improvement Commission, uh, Park Board, somebody from the Davenport Community School District, and the Downtown Partnership. And okay, then, what, what was DRP? Uh, uh, Design Review Board. Oh, thanks. Yep. DRP. Thank you. And, and then three our three staff people. So Steve, Parks, and is it Zach? And I think I have not reviewed. Okay. So there, there's a third staff person. I can probably look in my phone and tell you who it is. But uh, anyways, uh, that group will be tasked with um, taking in public input, doing a lot of research, and then bringing back to council a recommendation for a final design. Uh, the way it's set up is that the mayor would appoint those two 
uh, council folks. He's appointed me to be the chair of that task force and then Alderwoman McGinnis uh, to serve on it as well. And then each person who represents uh, which <coughs> the design review uh, board. Um, so, so I would pick somebody from the Riverfront Improvement Commission to sit on that task force and, and go along there. Um, and then the third thing it would, um, well, this, is, this isn't explicitly stated in there. Um, the thing that I asked for is that, uh, so this was outside of it, is that the mayor uh, appoint a group whose sole task <laughs> is to uh, figure out the funding of Main Street Landing as a whole, looking at uh, private dollars, public dollars, grants, uh, just all of our different ways that we can get this thing funded so that when they're waking up in the morning, the thing that they're thinking about is how can we make Main Street Landing happen. I think one of the issues we all know is uh, the city of Davenport isn't going to, uh, you know, bond out for 55 or 60 million dollars and build this park next year. Um, if we're going to, if we're going to get this park done, we probably have to do it. With money. We probably have to do it with grants. We need probably state dollars, federal dollars, corporate dollars, uh, private donations, and we need a group that that's their focus. Um, so the mayor hasn't announced who that will be or what that group will look like, but that is something that. Uh, I asked him to commit to doing uh, last week, and he said that he would. So more to come on that. Thank you. Would you like a recommendation from us for the person from our group to be on your group? It, well, if there's if there's people who are who are interested, for sure. Right. Yeah. Do we need to do it at this meeting or at the next meeting? Maybe if you just express your interest, and then I can convey that because it's it's just being approved tomorrow so that might be and then how quick are you forming the group um probably probably pretty quickly so we probably needed to do it if yeah if so you have i guess if you have interest it would probably be best to let steve know and then i'll, I'll make an appointment based on that who's interested billy canner <laughs> you, gotta go. you want to do this? You want to do this? How about one of the new, well, we can talk newer, about it. younger Think members. about it and talk about it. Email Steve. Um, hmm? think okay, about think about it. it. So what, is, what do you think is the workload for the committee? Or probably it's commitment. Yeah. Um, I, I would imagine we get together uh, a couple times, two, three times a month, maybe for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. I would see it going like that at the front end, and then there might be a little bit of a break yeah. because the idea would be to go out to find a firm. I, I think initially back. we're going to have to get together mm -hmm. and do a lot of brainstorming yeah. of what we want, and then we, we've got we've got staff people who can do that legwork, but we need to make a decision before we send our staff people out to, to start looking at different mm -hmm. things. Um, Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by a decision? A decision is what? A recommendation for what the uh, the uh, world class playground will look like. The design of it, what the design will be. So whether uh, I'll leave it at that. What the, the rec if they're, they're, that group will come back with a recommendation like to how the council. Like active of a playground versus you know passive. Yeah, and and potentially if if there was a theme or. Right, and then you would that group a consultant could consultant that would knock that right. out. Sure. Uh, how, how much uh, possibility is of change? I mean, I've seen it. I, I mean, my concern with what's been presented is is maintenance costs. The, I mean, go on down there and look today, and look, it's low. But if you get high water, real high. How does the city address the future maintenance costs of that? Uh, and and has anybody made an Yes, so uh, we, we know that that has to be considered in, and I actually don't think that it, uh, this, the, uh, the task force for the playground might get into that, um, but I really think the group that's going to get into that is the group that's looking at the funding, uh, that group that the mayor's going to get together, because if, if you're going to fund the build out of the park, I think there's also going to be you're going to solve the issue of how do you maintain it, how do you program it, and that's all going to be wrapped up w with that 
that group. I don't feel that you're doing a good job for what I mean and that you build in to the whole package. Well, I, I, I agree with what you just We're said. We're not going so I source just, of yes. level, no. Yeah. It's hard to get anyone down there, so. I, I agree with what you said, I agree with what Kyle said. Somebody else will start looking at the future cost of all this, but it could be a high bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, without doubt, yeah. yeah. I agree with what you have said. I do with that. Well, sh whoever is interested, that yeah, I, I'm new to the commission. I know it's my my first meeting. I have interest in it, but I'm sure there are people here that have more experience with the commission that may be better in that position. So, okay. Well, yeah. I want to see a young person doing younger than me. <laughs> well, <laughs> that'd be everybody else. That'd be everybody <laughs> else except <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> well. I, <laughs> Maybe in, in, you know, think about it for the next week or so. Yeah, yeah. and then if you're interested, let Steve know. Okay. And if no one's interested, then think about it. Okay. Seriously. Okay. Very good. So shall we start with the next presentation, or is, yep. is that I'm how we should do this? Yep. Lights or? a little bit, but um, first I wanted to make mention that Kyle Carter with the Downtown Downtown Partnership and uh, Tim Schiffer with the Figgy are uh, here as well. Come on up. At this time. Come on this up and sit with us. Is this the presentation that was at the Figgy? Is this it's a, not exactly Not exactly that. a short it's, version. It's kind of an then we're going to discuss it. Shorter version. And, Very good. Zach. and Kyle and Tim are going to help us. Okay. It's been Zachtified. Is that the <coughs> way to say it? <coughs> We've got about a 15, 20 minute thing and then it'll be conducive for some discussion. Okay, so so we had talked at the last meeting. It was like a little better. Nice if it yeah. was, but it we really actually was better. better. And then that we could say like give us just feedback on it or see if it's better. So we should say. Okay. So so for my reference, uh, who was all in attendance at the RDB? Uh, <laughs> so all pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. So. I'll, I'll kind of blow through this. A lot of it is, is kind of uh, remedial in that sense. So it was prepared with the understanding that we were trying to reach the audience that wasn't there with this meeting. So, Do you, do you want us to ask questions and discuss as we go or after you're done? Um, feel free to jump in and say, oh, this is boring, move on. So we got a lot of pretty pictures and that kind of thing. So, <laughs> but I mean questions, you know, or... Yeah, oh, just jump in. Yeah, just jump, jump in. in. Yeah, okay. let's jump in wherever. And we've free got to our, jump our in. color okay. commentators here to yes. uh, <laughs> to chime in whenever right. I go wrong or miss a point. That uh, our partners uh, um, with the Figgy and partnership uh, brought up. So. <coughs> so there's just a couple of people who haven't seen it then. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Fair. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the dog and pony show. Will um, it go out on television? I mean, we'll what's that? Will Will this? That's a very good question. Uh, typically, they are. You know, they got different camera angles all over the place, hidden cameras. Um, I don't know if it's being creatively. But, um, but, but since two days after, the, well, yeah, it's been online. Five it's days online. After, it's, online right? it's online. It's online, and the slides are too. Right. The video and slides. So developing the uh, the vision that we have before us, being River Vision and subsequent plans, we've been working with these uh, the C's of uh, comprehensive simultaneous development strategies confirming the site program, compiling a site development strategy, creating consistency, clearing the site, constructing project phases, conceptualizing future improvements, and collaborating to provide the wow factor. So most of you have seen this, but uh, just to go on, to give you the gist of the idea, we've got uh, two plans and, and now a, a new one into the mix, um, River Vision 2004 for this area. Uh, and a subsequent follow-up 10 years later with uh, 2014. Think of uh, revision uh, 2004 as a 30,000 foot view. Getting a little bit closer into the details with uh, 2014. But uh, distilled at their, their basic elements, they're, they're pretty consistent in terms of what the, the key concepts are. Having uh, key gateways, extending uh, downtown urban fabric to the riverfront, uh, urban promenade in some case, and outdoor rooms, the main uh, idea there. Uh, the common themes, they embrace the views that we have, the, the fantastic river views that we have here. Developing a uh, series of outdoor rooms, as I mentioned, connecting downtown with the water, activating the space, giving people a reason to be there, and in turn that sprouts all sorts of crazy things like economic development amongst uh, downtown. 
um, exploring public-private partnerships in terms of uh, leveraging strategies to get it done. So just as 2014 was uh, initiated as uh, an update to the 2004 plan, five years have elapsed and a lot of uh, priorities have changed and, and shifting interests have uh, kind of uh, had their own impact on the overall site plan. So uh, 2014 had some ideas thrown out like uh, development of what was the, uh, the former dock restaurant. Um, most of the um, site program is uh, pretty consistent with what's, far, uh, what's been developed thus far. Um, but you know, taking a look further, the green are ideas uh, and program elements that were brought forth in 2014 that are still relevant today. The yellows are pretty consistent with some modifications, and the reds are like, huh? Um, for instance, the red, the Belvedere, uh, the Bider Beck Belvedere uh, was originally intended to be a way to access the, the dock development from the uh, sky bridge in uh, a flood situation, and with that being relocated towards the sky bridge, uh, the preferred site for that. Some of these elements aren't, aren't relative anymore, relevant. Uh, the other idea was this, this beach front. Um, I, I don't know, I mean, and we, we go through, yeah, we have some thumbs down, but it, was, it wasn't brought up and that was every one of those public meetings. It wasn't brought up and it shows up on this plan. It's like, well, there wasn't a whole lot of thought behind other than kind of what, what was Hargrave's greatest hits. So taking a crack at it from a, a staff level uh, with these modifications uh, amounted to this concept that was developed in uh, 2018. So getting closer, 15,000 foot view, uh, some of the elements uh, outlined in the, uh, the football diagram there um, and how that might relate to the site moving forward. So in terms of compiling a comprehensive site development strategy, uh, the gist of it is um, in 2014 dollars, uh, River Vision was estimated 35.56 million, um, which means we need to phase it. So uh, the site has uh, lent itself well to developing and phasing in these development blocks as seen here. So a series of, the out, it goes along with the outdoor room concept and preserving these corridors from downtown to the riverfront. And in terms of phasing, if we've got to phase it out over time to make it happen and hit our target, we need to be consistent with our design where we don't have piecemeal design to approach where people, we develop one block, they have their own vocabulary and do their own thing and then another block comes in and they don't really jive together. We, we want to have that consistent element. So uh, we sent an RFP out, our RDG uh, came to the table and that's where our relationships first started for the riverfront uh, with the preparation design guidelines for the site. So it took into account a uh, unified design theme by creating a sense of place on the, uh, the riverfront. So we're starting this place making. It's kind of a big, big idea how to make this a special place. Those initiatives uh, uh, were kind of seeded here and grew, grew root after that point. So it's the overarching umbrella that organized everything together um, as part of this phase approach. So we looked at things like site furnishings, bike racks, we went into the level of detail with uh, bollards, site lighting, and you'll see these elements repeated throughout what we're about to show you <coughs> with uh, the follow-up studies. Site materials, concrete pavers, colors associated with that. Concrete uh, style, saw cut look to it, clean uniform, room finish, that's all the minutia that this actually went into detail with. And an organized plant palette for the site. So we can have a consistent element that is uh, flood tolerant and some of our unique site constraints is taken into account with that. Uh, another element was site branding. So coming up with a logo idea and how that might be uh, integrated throughout the site through uh, signage and wayfinding and a, a color scheme for that with some, even even the fonts used within the, the signage. So uh, from there on, we've been working since uh, the casino left in 2016, clearing the site. And that was no small task. There's a lot of stuff underneath the surface there. We've uncovered a lot of history, but uh, wiping the slate clean for, um, for that, that blank canvas of opportunity uh, to make things work from here. Uh, so roughly over that year span, uh, the site became, well, almost shovel ready for, for future improvements. As far as construction is concerned, uh, the first phase, uh, which is what we're currently, what's under construction is what was block N5 called out in the uh, diagram here. 
um, but it merges the River Vision theme of a garden and parking lot, um, so it's consistent with that. Some may say artistic liberty, but it, it's, it's consistent. I'll, I'll argue that point. Um, it was selected as an initial uh, project phase due to uh, relatively known costs um, and being able to fit within our target budget, as well as being the link between downtown and the riverfront. Um, creating an activity center as part of that. Huh, I've got some issues with our the pointer. Pardon that. So uh, here's the, how it looks uh, before we wrapped up uh, last year, and we got Hesco's out there. We're going to be underwater for a good month or so. Um, however, right now, uh, in terms of construction, since we have River Drive closed off. We have actually mobilized Hawkeye Construction to do what they can and get uh, some of the streetscape and uh, curbing in while the river is with manageable. So if it comes up higher, yeah, we're going to have to call them off. But uh, right now, um, they're not spending that extra money for uh, uh, traffic control measures to, to make that happen. So here's what we're shooting for uh, coming soon um, to a park near you. The, the flex lot is what it's called, um, flexible event space. So parking lot by day, and it takes on a unique uh, characteristic by night or through special events, uh, high level of finish, um, seat walls for, for festival spaces, lighting uh, from the uh, design guidelines, overhead catenary and high mass lighting uh, to create different moods. They can be toggled on and off for uh, different events, how they're being uh, staged there. Uh, room for each one of these are 10 foot modules, so a standard uh, tent can fit in there for uh, events and uh, vendors and those kind of things, as well as place for, the, it creates also pods for food truck, uh, uh, the food truck scene here to uh, set up there uh, as they can be used uh, concurrently or by themselves through a special events. The center of the, the lot is uh, the event space is a, a makeshift area where a, a mobile stage can be set up and the, the seating arrangement with the, the planters is arranged around it for an informal seating area. So the meat of this, where we're, we're all here, um, we're all gathered here today, uh, are the next uh, two C's mentioned in here, conceptualizing the future improvements. So where do we go from here now that uh, we're underway with the first phase. Uh, hopefully it'll be done this summer, um, but, you know, weather permitting uh, and uh, acts of God, if you will. Uh, to conceptualizing where do we go from here, what's the next phase are we targeting, and what are we doing, and collaborating with uh, other agencies to pr provide uh, the wow factor. So in terms of facilitating a bigger discussion, uh, the, the Figgy in partnership with the Downtown Partnership hired RDG, who started a work on our site actually with the design guidelines. They're also affiliated with Dahlquist Design Group, uh, which is an offshoot of theirs. It's kind of their, their art studio that uh, they work in, um, their partnership, but they're the same company that works together on um, creating that artistic element and, and that unique element to a lot of the things. You've seen the high trestle bridge in it's always the, the postcard for Iowa outside of uh, Madrid. Mm -hmm. uh, Dahlquist Studio did that, took an ordinary um, bridge overpass for a trail, made it exceptional. So what can we do to make take it to the next level to create that space, uh, that sense of space? What's the postcard wow pow moment here? Um, also, they were tasked with finding an artistic backstory that could be duplicated and uh, replicated throughout the Quad City area. So some of these concepts could be taken into account downtown Rock Island, Moli and Bettendorf or working up the river. So for someone actually traveling down Mississippi, there's <coughs> a unified theme there that uh, uh, really ties the area together from a regional perspective. And uh, findings give the city armed with more pretty pictures and things to, to generate this more interest in taking into these uh, fundraising goals as Alderman Grip kind of went into and in, in making this happen, get the interest going, because uh, I'll kind of mention we're kind of stuck in a in a holding pattern as far as that's concerned before we take this out and make it a bigger vision. And the city has the option of integrating the plan concepts into the, the overall plans for the river. And as a follow-up, um, Alderman Grip also stole my thunder, but uh, 
on consent for tomorrow uh, is is this verbiage uh, taken directly from the um, say the resolution that's uh, going before council tomorrow but it, it basically um, accepts the plan as, as submitted in and gives it consideration as I don't want to use the semantics of adopted or accepted but the fact of the matter is these ideas brought forth are going to be integrated into the overall river planning so that was kind of a, a pleasant thing I think Kyle can attest to that that coming forward uh, something like this, so, you know, it was like, is council gonna back this? But no, council likes what they've seen and uh, wants to integrate it into the, the overall bigger picture. So switching gears, RDG came through, as most of you saw their presentation on February 15th uh, and presented publicly their findings of this uh, comprehensive arts study uh, meant to accent uh, what we've done thus far for master planning efforts. Uh, they've developed what's called uh, ebb and flow, and help me out, guys, if I'm I'm speaking out of turn or um, you feel like putting in some two cents here. But uh, the overall concept is ebb and flow. Uh, the river moves, the river moves, <coughs> the city. So I'm going to spare you with I'm not as eloquent as David Dahlquist. I'm not able to present the kind of pictures he has or spout literature. Poetry. He's well read. It's poetic. He is extremely poetic and I can't do that justice so I'm going to paraphrase in my limited vocabulary. So <laughs> the undulating currents and whirling eddies of Mississippi are echoed in the contours of the riverfront offering new destinations for recreation, reflection, entertainment and events. The concept builds upon previous studies to connect the riverfront with downtown Davenport and the Figgy Art Museum inviting people to gather at the river's edge and explore multi-use venues. Sculptural frameworks are thoughtfully integrated throughout, engaging people with beautiful views of the, their community and realigning perspectives. The Sky Bridge gains m more relevance as the primary link to the pavilion, sky deck, event lawn, and more. So what does that all mean? Well, our artistic scope and strategies first. Uh, engage our fantastic river view from Centennial Bridge uh, uh, to uh, Lock and Dam 15 is the, is the main view shed throughout there. Um, that's what it means by bridge to dam. Uh, frames, integrated forms that connect the quad city. So we'll show some pictures of what this artistic element might look like. Um, a new destination, a place you can experience over and over again and changes your perception of what's actually there today and really immerses you in that river experience. Responsive to existing utilities, we've got the hodgepodge of stuff on the ground so we're not going to get too crazy relocating sewer lines that uh, the entire sewage from the city of Bettendorf flows through right on our riverfront. We don't want to, <coughs> we want to be respectful of existing infrastructure. Uh, responsive, yeah, and lighting, giving different characteristics. Lighting is, is what makes or breaks a site in terms of being a place you want to experience uh, at all hours. Um, I'm sure <laughs> parks will want to have uh, ded dedicated uh, hours on, on whatever's going on. So conceptual development, here it is. Um, this makes perfect sense to me as a designer. But <laughs> it's, it's the initial go through with, with the ideas of uh, the site unfolding as a series of mimicking some of the natural patterns of the river, eddies, and, and those kind of elements um, which make up the organizing theme of the site. But so here's the thing, if people are, are threatened by some of these ideas, they're not, um, new ideas necessarily. Um, these, these natural processes were definitely um, thought about and integrated into the, the initial go through through staff. I mean this is definitely the thought process behind that kind of evoking images of the, of the eddy and those kind of things. So in terms of that, uh, the thought process is right in line with the direction we were heading anyways as staff. So it, it's great as far as integrating further. So how that evolved from their, their concepts uh, and how it uh, comes together uh, in their, their run through with their, their master plan. So the various programmatic elements I'll, I'll go through. So here's a uh, sh shot of it uh, from an aerial perspective, uh, how it relates to you know, the riverfront, the dam in the background and our downtown urban fabric. Daytime and nighttime, uh, this site can really come alive and create a new perspective, a new uh, personality at night. Thrown in conjunction with ideas that, that aren't necessarily uh, new, 
that have been around for a while, but uh, what if we do things like light up the dam and further accent what we've been having? So, oh, RDG, I guess, came back or initially long before the design guidelines and worked on a bridge, or uh, sorry, a dam lighting uh, program for River Action a while back. So um, they're, they're not necessarily strangers to this area. In terms of resilience, you know, it's a difficult site in terms of, well, it's flooding right now, but um, are there ways to strategically uh, develop it to where inundation, it's resilient, and inundation happens, and certain programmatic elements that probably have the high cost remain high and dry. So and this is a ahead. flood elevation. Good it question. To me I, like I don't. It's Nineteen something. Yeah. If we didn't. That, that's probably nineteen. So yeah. it's probably not uh, about a cataclysmic level, but but your average run of the mill. Uh, so mm -hmm. this plan. Yeah. yeah, this plan looks to me like it anticipates um, raising um, the ground level. Correct. Which would be where our play, Correct. active play area Correct. would be. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and also, um, in terms of being with that elevation, strategic elevation, you protect your high investment costs. Right. Uh, maintenance costs, you know, you, you protect it that way. And also, right. the added element of being able to be accessible in a flood condition. Right. Um, the details of that, but the, 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 this is a theory at, at practice right here, in terms of being able to be used and have a, even uh, moving forward, have a, uh, even new perspective for being able to experience a site when the flood waters are around it. Um, so, if I was standing um, at the end of the sky bridge, mm -hmm. um, I would be looking upstream. Um, if you're, you're thinking about it, it looks to me like three feet, mm -hmm. three, three to four feet of fill. Fifteen. You want to go to eighteen to nineteen. I think at the end of the uh, end of the sky bridge, it's like 19, almost 20, mm -hmm. when you walk in there. Yeah, the, the end of the sky bridge is whatever uh, 100 year is. Yeah. Th that that yeah. doorway is is kind of the key benchmark because that's right. a 100 year. Um, so, I mean, so these are the details. Does this plan anticipate like by taking the wall, the seawall away, and making it wavy, bringing that material back? Or that's too early to tell. Well, what what they're showing conceptually is right here is where the existing wall is. Right. So it, it's all internal to that. So built back from that mm -hmm. that point. Um, and you know, I'm not the author of this, so I'm I'm just speaking by pra see proxy. If I understand it. <coughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think that, that was the intent. It brings up a good point that as we look at like this the second phase with the the playground concept, that terraforming is an important part of the whole right. idea. Yes. So that regardless of whatever the, the super cool thing is that we build, the, the, the ground itself is something that needs to be taken, taken into account through the planning process. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Well, are we not at, at 19? Wouldn't there not be water in LeClaire Park? Uh, well, this is their scope. They they weren't looking you know, very well. So, yeah. But yeah. So, well, they kind of see you on agree. the. <laughs> that's the last place to flood, though. That air, playground area. Yeah, I mean, it's right, out of the right water now, right now. Everything else is underwater. It's out of water. Yeah, the areas in the casino are up a good foot, foot and a half over yeah. Blair Park. <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah. so the, the parking lot was as high and dry as it possibly yeah. could. It's like Centennial Park. Well, it does look like they kind of represent it on the north side of the, uh, mm -hmm. the railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah. So I don't else. know what. I would hazard a guess that this is much higher than the existing. Um, Le Leclerc Park, they're not... But oh, their yeah. plan also really elevates the downstream side of Harrison, if I recall. Correct. That dark green there. Th this dark green area. Those, those areas are built up. Leclerc Park up. gets wet at 15. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Water runs in the viaduct at 18.5. Yeah. So That's perhaps right. this, is, yeah. this is not an accurate representation of the flood condition in Leclerc right. Park. No, that would be all no. blue. Right. If, if, if we got blue up here, this is underwater. Yeah. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> We got it. So in terms of phasing, uh, they, they took a crack at um, breaking down the site into these these incremental phases and, <coughs> and gave their, their two cents as far as recommended uh, action plan moving forward. So it, it's separated into uh, these certain programmatic elements that I'll, I'll go into. Uh, first of which, the uh, Sky Deck Pavilion and Main Street Promenade. Um, 
they actually they they're they're viewing this as um, where they would probably argue to put the, the wild pal kind of first phase that they'd be leaning towards something like this. So you have make you know Main Street Landing. It's called Main Street Landing. Let's do something on Main Street. So a plaza element. Um, the uh, Building at the end of the sky bridge uh, would maybe be the main focus of that. So here's some um, perspectives of what that might look like. So the building itself would come off and be integrated into the, the sky bridge, but down a level where the existing uh, terminus of the, the sky bridge would uh, lead out onto this, this platform. Uh, and a bent lawn down here at the foot of the um, main street with uh, this the artistic uh, gateway element that, that's being developed throughout repeating forms and the regional art element behind this. Uh, they're talking about, and so this is this is the best guess, this is a crack at this idea, what what this building looks like, what it contains is is definitely up to you know, market studies and further due diligence to to determine what exactly it contains, but they're, they're throwing out this notion of a 7,000 foot sky deck overlook um, 3,000 square foot pavilion is part of it, so they, they were pretty generic in, in terms of what the building would be, and more of a, um, lack of a better term, like a, a, a lodge almost, where you know, <coughs> events, ballroom, whatever. Um, there wasn't any commercial element proposed at this point, but well, that's what there was. was. There's the commercial yeah. element to the to the main floor in the sense that that 3,000 would be kind of the area in which you'd have a kitchen and be able to yeah, have a restaurant. Have a if there's a wedding on the top deck, that's what's catering, what's upstairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not talking Joe's Crab Shack, right. though. Yeah. So I think that's really important in that it, there is absolutely a commercial element and a restaurant component, but it's very modest. And I think that's the smart decision. I, I personally believe that a very large restaurant space would fail miserably. Uh, that the, yeah. the smaller, more modest, more efficient you make this, the better. Uh, and I think that has been something the general public has maybe not had time to digest yet, mm -hmm. especially with how it's laid out here. It's, it, to your point, intentionally kind of open-ended. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I do want to be clear that that component's present. It's just maybe not quite to the, to the scale that maybe some folks were thinking, mm -hmm. but probably for the better in my point. Well, yeah. If we want to take a step back with the uh, rough highs and development, well, were there three or four restaurants in this mm -hmm. thing? So uh, this is a, a change from that. This is a change up. So it's a lot easier to cash flow something of this nature than a massive facility that requires a huge amount of, of daily traffic to just keep the doors open. Absolutely. I think it's better that that kind of facility is on the other side of River Drive. Right. Mm -hmm. So. It, but uh, so but you can still get, you know, the idea was you can still get your beer and you can still get a sandwich and you can still cater the wedding. And that's really the goal. Alderman McGinnis was looking for that beer location. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where can I get a beer? <laughs> about that. Yeah, I, <laughs> still can. It's, it's not going to be at a crab shack. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just crab shack. <laughs> so the event lawn, what that would look like. So the artistic element uh, being this, this gateway concept at the terminus of uh, Main Street. So framing the views across the river. So think of the, the postcard moment coming down there, taking a picture through that and, you know, have a selfie underneath it and those kind of things. I but, think this is my favorite component. part. Mm -hmm. I think the, I mean, looking at the riverfront, seeing all the plans, it closing the Main Street ramp gives the opportunity to gather so many people around the sky bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the boat ramp is really, it just makes it too small for the investment. Right. And yeah. so I, I, I think this, they just hit on something here right. that ju I, I think it's just gonna make this so much more worthwhile. It was a surprise to us Good. too. This was nothing that we led them on. We didn't mm -hmm. feed this idea. They no. came back to us and said, what if? And to Dee's point, it's like, oh yeah, that that actually makes a lot of. It had never occurred to me that, you know, it makes it hard to use the end of the sky bridge when there's not enough footprint there to do do it. Yeah, but it's cool. It lends itself well. It was originally intended to be part of the Eddy concept, having an actual wet area there. It was supposed to be uh, uh, the river inundating yeah. it and that kind of stuff. The dry mm -hmm. is so much better. Yeah, and, and so we, they kind of surprised themselves. <coughs> you know, they were kind of reminded, like, oh yeah, you know. Um, the city came back as like, well, this isn't gonna work. It's gonna be wet. And every time I've seen, just in my travels around, be it uh, Ohio or Louisville or something, anytime you do one of these eddy things, these nooks and crannies, trash just 
flocks to it like a magnet. So if you, unless you have people with a skimmer there every hour maintaining it, it's going to look like garbage. And you didn't gain the space then. No. no. Yeah. You so, might have gained seating, but you didn't gain the space. Yeah. Which you need. And it, it plays really, really well with this. Mm -hmm. So thinking in terms of something there, maybe a performance or something, and having mm -hmm. um, that, that yeah. prospect to it. Uh, upstream, they're proposing, uh, with the staff uh, rundown, it was more cautious in terms of leaving the, the wall where it is, but they're, their goal is to think big. So they can say these kind of things, and it's like, okay, let's do a, a terrace back from uh, the, the existing river wall. Let's do away with it and be more organic in the, in the shape. So it, it's cool in terms of being more natural, if you will, faux natural, with uh, the, the hard geometry of the city grid meeting the river that interplay is kind of, it's neat from an aesthetic perspective. So here's what that would uh, look like. And don't get hung up on the details of, of what's in this or what it is, what it isn't. The idea is it's sloped back with this undulating form and how that would uh, relate to the experience of being on a curvilinear river walk rather than a straight line. So. I'm imagining myself, I like to do this. I would be standing on this walkway about three feet above where I am right now, right at 15, so that would be about 18 feet. And then this would tear us down into the river at its natural flow, which is what, eight. about nine, eight and a half, yeah. nine feet. Mm -hmm. So it can maybe allow you to actually see the water as you, Mm -hmm. in, a, in a longer perspective than you can now when you have to overlook and take a look down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you think of the, yeah, yeah, like, good good point, the sight line, looking out, it's not I, straight down, you're, you're looking out over it. And I think when I read the feedback, that kind of was a big issue with people, is that they'd like to mm -hmm. be able to be closer, or feel closer, or see, feel closer to the river. And, and those are details that, yeah. that this obviously, yeah. the, the, the city it was looking at it from a risk management perspective, mm -hmm. like we have to do. Um, however, you look at uh, precedents of bigger uh, visions like this in Louisville, yeah. there are no barriers. You walk down the river and it, the Ohio current is going just like Mississippi through there. So these are details that will come forward as the project's vetted further. So. Uh, so yeah, promenade overlook, so the public guard integration, so each uh, respective uh, say, viewshed uh, of the urban grid would terminate in these series of uh, artistic elements, uh, gateways, uh, frames, if you will. So when you're at one end of it, it presents itself with a interesting, a different perspective, having them all lined up in, in different locations, lit up at night spectacularly. I'll go into that a little bit more. I'll, I'll move on. Um, is that all back of the alignment of the existing wall? Yes. Correct. So uh, the other element being the, the, the playground concept, taking that forward. You know, um, obviously there were certain elements that were taken to more of a detailed element than others. But the overall thought being ways of integrating a, uh, what's the natural playground, or a playground in a, a natural area, that's no different from what we've been proposing at a staff level in terms of programming. <laughs> so, clarify the what Kyle was talking about about the pack the work group that will be gathered is it for that playground or is it for the area underneath uh, it's for Sorry. that playground. oh yep. sorry yep. I was picturing it's for next uh, to the flex I was picturing yes. underneath the sky so it is not no. it is yeah. not what uh, it. has been referred right. to as the, the urban lounge yeah. right yeah. Uh, urban, yeah. okay yeah. got but it, it thanks but you probably would look at the one that, the how it flows into that one next to it that is kind of the I think that goes. We'll back see. We'll see. I mean, when you yeah. design it, you. I, I think mean, it goes I would think that because each you've got these two well, well, kind of. My comment done. about the whole terraforming thing yeah. is that, regardless of what the playground ultimately looks like, we have to do that at the same time anyway. If mm -hmm. with, since it's just the first phase, it's natural that we're going to have to look at the ground and how it relates to the whole the whole thing. Right. Yeah, I, I think the way that they design this is you you still kind of have these room concepts, but they all. It, it, they, they flow together so yeah right. you, you can't make one without considering the other absolutely and that'll be a, a task that, that the, the this task force will have to look at looking at all these plans put forth together and, and ensuring that what's going on there is consistent with these ideas moving forward well you don't really want motor graders to come over a finished walkway you know yes I mean so you, you do have to kind of figure out what what you're gonna do there on mm -hmm. that part
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. She's like, what elevation are we at? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it also is uh, hinted at in um, previous river uh, vision studies uh, as well as uh, the staff version uh, shied away from it a little bit, uh, but this transition uh, between what's considered Main Street Landing and uh, LeClaire Park. Uh, there needs to be a subtle transition there to where it's not just stark. You're in one and right. you're in another. So that's the idea behind this space, uh, going from Main Street into LeClaire Park. It, it kind of diffuses and turns back into the, you know, the historic element we have there. This plan, um, as an interesting element, is actually proposing, uh, rather than have the, the landing here actually going down, and details to be determined if this happens at all, but um, if there is a landing or access point for things like we were talking about earlier in this meeting, kayaks or things, a river launch, river trail launch, would that happen that at the end of Harrison? It's possible. You know, these are ideas. So this plan does not um, help us with the idea of a ferry coming back and forth, a no. boat landing, or a pier. Right. And, and, and those, those elements were, were absent right. from this. Uh, I, I think, you know, as we talk about planning, I, I, I really think there does need to be a group now who takes on kind of looking at what is the um, importance of, of a dock? Should we have this mm -hmm. into the river? Mm -hmm. um, how many people use it? What do you use it? Or could it be something that's up a little bit more elevated, which where you could maybe bring a boat alongside? We used to have the St. Genevieve parked really mm -hmm. about right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you, you look know, here in the very fine print, it says <laughs> potential no future right docking facility. <laughs> but but <laughs> it, there's no water depth where you're at right there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. The dock wasn't part of their scope, though. And, and no, that, that's the other we part of it. We no. intentionally filled yeah. that. And that's another yeah. reason yeah. why I think this group... It was sat on the bottom. That's another reason why <laughs> this group... <laughs> it's so important yeah, to the conversation. Because we do, we agree that yes. the river access is, is very relevant, but again, it wasn't in their scope. So we were curious what you guys thought about Harrison versus Marquette, you know, especially if, if Maine is, is ground. You know, what are the thoughts? And, and I know you're far more of an expert on where the best access points are along this, this chunk of the river. And um, we just did not want to push them and yeah, no. to burn a bunch of time and money yeah. developing a, an access point beyond the idea that, well, here's a spot <laughs> and we'll get to that yeah. later. Well, and yeah, again. I, I, and I do, th but I, I agree with you. And I don't, uh, you know, as Bill says, you're not gonna be able to bring a boat up against the wall, even if it was there, it just, is deep enough there's so much to be done the so there should be some thought you know sh do we do we really need another entryway into the river it used main street was the only place the police or the fire department could go in well now they're on the water so i i do think there should, could be some work there to determine if you really need that um at all that piece or if we do or, or it could be what up. Do you, what do you have to engineer to get a large Same. boat to be able to drop yeah. the yeah. You can solve anything with enough money. I mean, is it here, here. Yeah. You know, is, it, um, is the engineering not even feasible? What are these two structures that appear that are represented? Uh, that is actually the, the existing restroom on site and then the relocated levy in. So they put the levy in out of the flood car. Uh -huh. They put it up. Yes, they for the record, it, it salvages the, the levy in. <laughs> no one is. No one wants yeah. to fill the levy in. <laughs> you know, also changes the bathroom. Right. So you can Are those I, we got more hate mail about the levy <laughs> in. Uh, well, to, I've, I've had discussions with people that would rather keep it as a flood monument than, than a usable structure. And it's like, right. that's just ludicrous. But, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep it there if you want, but no one's tearing it down for the record. It's yeah. <laughs> we have no desire to demolish. So it's talking about relocating some of those those elements. Uh, the urban lounge idea hasn't changed uh, pretty much at all from what we've done before. Uh, this idea was, is once again, not part of their scope because you, you reach that fine line between an art study and a complete park redesign. And, and then there, there's that political battle that takes place between those elements. So um, the idea still remains the same. Ideas to be, you know, 
we've got a vague notion of what the space is and what it could be, but you know that that comes out in in the planning process when we uh, target that particular block for development. Is Dillon Fountain retained in its location? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, think an enhanced. And then an this, enhanced this new idea well, of... Uh, I think we wanted to kind of beef that up. Mm -hmm. A mirror plaza. Yeah. Uh, so that that is uh, a, a complete sea change, I'd say, compared to what we've done mm -hmm. thus far in terms of what was envisioned in the previous plans is your traditional kind of uh, sculpture garden. And um, Tim's been on the record many, many a times about not wanting to curate something that, that could be damaged by constant inundation, that kind of yeah. stuff. So <laughs> this is rethinking that space and throwing out new ideas, again, ideas for consideration. Uh, so, and th this has been lost in previous, but so to answer your question, Carl, that stick there is a massing model of the Dillon Fountain. So it does not change, it's still there, but it's integrated into a re-envisioned uh, courtyard. Um, and, and this idea of this, this artistic element uh, being a focal point of this in conjunction with the Figgy, uh, various functions could happen out here, is proposing a, a large scale sculpture on a, a mirror pond, which can take on various- like zero depth. Yeah. Zero depth uh, mirror pond that, that could be an ice skating venue in the winter time, sheltered, you could have uh, you know some sort of functionality in there, like uh, Des Moines has this flexible space that's um, uh, for, it's a it's covered uh, structure for you know, events in the summertime, but in the wintertime it, it's, it's ice skating. It, it's, it's really well done, but this could <coughs> uh, work towards some, some kind of element like that. Art in a public uh, venue, and then an overlook to uh, a winding path that goes up this uh, the structure to look back on on the development. I'll, I'll show some of those uh, images, but putting it together, that's the program. So if you go to the Figgy and you walk outside on the River Drive side, mm -hmm. that part on the other side would be at the same elevation. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So you would be up there. That'd be cool. Comes to life at night. It's a parking. Uh, <laughs> you notice the like materials that. here come right out of our uh, design guidelines. Um, different moods throughout uh, throughout the day, throughout the year. <coughs> interests, day night interests, active space, programming it to where it's a place to be, getting people down there. People that are down there may not necessarily want uh, to uh, have a beer here in, in Marion's uh, bar. <laughs> but oh, they they go oh they might want to go to I don't know um, they might have a more refined taste and want to go to Endless Brews or uh, <laughs> go go to the diner down there oh, at, at the farmers market. Kids could yeah. find the water. Have you been to the uh -huh. diner? It's oh like yeah, a really nice place. Yeah. The view okay. from up top at the this uh, oh, she's really the public down. element she how that right right down the street works together with the, the existing the skyline. The, the Figgy Art Museum overlooking you know downtown, these panoramic views at night coming together. You can really get a feel for how this, this cool. site comes together. This lit element, can you imagine that like a mirror <laughs> pond? Uh, you're up here on the sky bridge looking down and, and the, the various moods and elements that could be uh, put forth through that. Um, down on, on the ground from the, the Main Street Plaza, how that interrelates. Um, and here's here's looking yeah. backwards from the, the top of this uh, this overlook element. So, as Dee mentioned, the same element uh, or same elevation as yeah, the figure figure itself, mm -hmm. looking out and yeah, over. Like open up that site. Right. Or you know, once again, the the flexibility of programming the space, weddings, whatever. If you look at uh, um, the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, initially designed um, Monona Terrace in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, it's kind of similar to this in terms of. It is always rented out. There's always something going on there. Graduation, bar mitzvahs, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're on top of this thing. It's out over Lake Monona. It's gorgeous. This is kind of our version of that. But they don't let you have beer out there. They don't? <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's a shame. We'll fix that. <laughs> <We're Iowa>. <laughs> yeah, we'll fix that. <laughs> this uh, Centennial Bridge lit at night, how that would uh, look from this, this interesting feature through there. Also, looking in terms of what that experience is, how it always evolves as you're walking through the site. Various views unfold, the, the gateways unfold as you navigate through the space. 
here's a, a idea of uh, this is I believe the the Brady Street Gateway. What that might look like. You could have seating underneath it. It's flexible in its nature that it could actually be. And um, David Dahlquist, I don't know if you've seen online uh, how you have like a curtain wall of water that you can program mm -hmm. where the, the spout shut off and yes. you can have words and, and yes. phrases yes. Yes. that back uh, it. Color manufacturing enough. puts that out at show every Oh, yeah, day. yeah. yeah. So, a thousand pipettes in there. Computer, the, uh, computer control. And it's, and it's, yeah. like, <laughs> about the, it's like the faces. It's quite a crowd draw. Yeah. yeah. They're like Correct. behind the wall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And David had all kinds of cool ideas yeah. for those. Yeah. yeah. They're, 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 they're about a half a billion each. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's half a million each. I'm sold. That's a, that's <laughs> a starting. <laughs> that's a starting yeah. point. And the, and I wouldn't the let the cost phase, be an issue. You know, to make no, I wouldn't let cost be an issue either. Nope. And I love the idea that you put a water feature in the sculpture area, and you know, just an observation. But Davenport on the Mississippi River needs more water features. You know, between but also elevated enough to where it's not going to be it. clogged with goo. <laughs> well, <laughs> this would be awesome. Well, you know, one thing that we asked them to do was to create an element, an art element that could be replicated at other places along the river mm -hmm. in all the clusters. So these frames could actually be there could be one at Schroeder Park, there could mm -hmm. be one down at Dettendorf, yeah. framing the bridge, each park. and each city could customize it. However, they want. Like you could get a different artist to do a different version in every site. Hmm. It's, it's so then it would unify the whole both sides of the river. Yeah. Uh, the concept that I think, I think, besides just the framing, is that it's coming from a public way. Like if you're in, if you notice, these are all lined up with the street, so you can look up the street and down the street. And it's coming from this public way entrance. And that's that's the also kind of the theme idea going to other places. So you just don't plop it down, but that you have you're you're coming from somewhere and you see it ahead of you, mm -hmm. and it's framing the river, it's changing your viewpoint, it's bringing you to a place, you know. And that can be done a whole bunch of ways. They all they don't have to be rectangular, but when you when you see it, you know that that is kind of the same concept that frame is drawing you to the river. I think it's, it's a cool yeah. idea. And, and strategically, if you're traveling on, on the river, say you're on a barge or pleasure craft or something, yeah. the, you know, it would be a visual cue where you're at one, you would see the next one. So it, that logical progression would attract you towards the next one moving on up, up the river and so forth to you know, East Moline, the new uh, the quarter up there. Mm -hmm. the quarter. Yeah. yeah. So how this might interrelate to uh, the, the flood wall, kind of its own experience you were out jutting out onto the, the water and, and above it. So it, it's a different experience than when you're, you're back here, like, like Dee was talking about the sight lines. Here you're up close and personal, you're looking over it. It can be lit dramatically with other things. Um, you could have high top tables. You could do all sorts of things with these. There's plenty of ideas, no shortage of ideas. And I love what they did here with the catenaries, following those catenary lights uh, down these corridors. They're high and dry, they're above the floodplain. It's great. What a great solution. And thinking in terms of, you know, if we threw a, probably another 100,000, they'd, they'd render Rock Island in there to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the full. <laughs> and then vice versa, it's like, and then where, where Rock Island really has uh, an incredible view as well, looking back towards the city or if you're on the river. Yeah, that one's cool. Yeah. This one right here, yeah, especially. Yeah. So this, this nice lets you know, I mean, this is probably close to. Uh, it's gorgeous. On, on, the, on the other side there, but wow. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the stuff postcards are made out of, you know. So um, they were also tasked with uh, <laughs> applying costs to this. Yeah. And obviously this is just level of planning level. So I mean, you could take it or leave it. I mean, they alluded to the, this whole uh, sky depth pavilion, this, br uh, this building, you could do any, I mean, did they, they put a cost associated with 9.8 for something that's nice. But if you have it, you know, designed by a world-renowned architect, or uh, Tipperfield comes back, maybe. No. <laughs> now, or is he done no. with us? <laughs> he, he wouldn't. Do that. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. Yeah, Too small he, for him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. he's, he's he, not he into clear that. You know, this was sure. basically all the <coughs> group like doing this very nicely. But that, to Zach's point, if you want to get a star architect, of course you can tack way more money onto any one of these. But they wanted to try and do something reasonable. Um, and, and so to the, to the cost question, 
You know, I will be on that task force with, with uh, in fact, I'm meeting with the mayor on Friday to start the conversations about what that model looks like, who do we need to get at that table. Um, so lots of work to be done there, but the, the downtown partnership in the Smith District does extend to the river. It goes all the way to the river's edge. While we would need far more funding to be able to maintain something like this, we are already a, a well-run organization that could help maintain this on a daily basis. I think if we can get to that point where that funding mechanism is there, there's already an entity in ourselves that take care of 700 flower baskets now downtown and could, if we had capacity, add staff, add and, and, and be that body that helps the city maintain this because I know parks couldn't do it on their own and frankly, we don't want them to. No. Um, they got enough on their plate and they would, just like Millennium Park has its own army that's got its own funding that maintains their park, we would have to be at the table for that too. We just can't afford it on our current tax you know, allotment now, but again, that's why we need to get to that funding table and, you know, maybe there is somebody who really wants to drop serious coin on maintenance if if it's done in a way that there's a public-private partnership that excites them. Um, but no one likes writing a check to City Hall, so I, nope. I get that. Um, so at any rate, lots to be determined, but I wanted to make it clear that we already are in the jurisdiction of this vicinity. You know, the, the partnership today has can, can can spend money and can maintain this area. And from a city's perspective, want to just hammer home our, our point with this is we're still in the, in the whole grand scheme of things from a, a master plan through a built project. We are still way over here. These are pretty pictures still. We haven't even crossed the line into making it possible into schematic. So each iteration has been closer and closer to this target. And But I think we're not reinventing the wheel each time. So there's been some criticism about, oh, we keep planning and planning, but I, they all build on each other. I, I think that's the, the safe thing to say from, from these exercises, moving towards a, a, a better goal each time, I say. Um, more thoughts, more ideas being compiled into uh, the overall plan. By contrast, where we're at with uh, the flexible event space, we're down here, uh, we've been here about uh, a half a year, but uh, acts of God, acts of God, we'll, we'll get here towards the end at, at this year. And what I wanted to throw in is, is a bonus is combating the funding, funding conundrum. We've discussed this kind of uh, bits and pieces throughout this meeting, but um, with the absence of supplemental funding sources, with the grants, private donations, sponsorships, as, as Kyle mentioned, the city allocates $1 million a year for these improvements. So um, in 2014 dollars, uh, $35 million. Uh, and now with RDG 51.6, okay, we were at a 35-year project, now we're at a 51-year project, not in counting inflation escalation, so, whoo. Um, we, we realize this, That's, yeah. we need to tackle this in a community way. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and Kyle, you pointed out at the Figgy presentation that River Renaissance was a $117 million effort by the community. That's a lot. So that's a lot. And that's not even <laughs> that's not even double what we're looking yeah. at. Right. You know, that's excuse me, let me say that is more, more than, than double yeah. what we're looking at here in, in front of us. So this is more than doable. I think it's great to we're 50 years from a structural flood wall to prevent another flood of 1965 that was the <laughs> the flood that yeah. Pat and I remember as high schoolers and pass the hat downstream. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, true. Yeah. But we've we've grown to the point where uh, it's not just a, a concrete wall passing okay. the hat downstream. It's a world class destination. It might have taken us that long to uh, to grow up and realize it, but I think we certainly have. And if the community will join us in doing. Uh, a river renaissance rideau. I, I think this is eminently doable with the support of the entire community, the city, the, uh, the smith, the downtown, and, and other elements around the county, uh, the other elements of the county. You know, I've been promoting a levy levy uh, for years in this, in this uh, venue, and uh, maybe that time is, uh, is, is approaching now. So right now, I alluded to this, this kind of uh, 
conflict, I think the wheels are in motion to help resolve what's here, that this endless cycle of the city, like, well, show us the money, we'll build something, whereas people that are interested in donating, we're kind of unsure of, of the product you guys are looking, what do you guys want us, you know, to, to commit to, and that kind of thing. So I, I, the wheels are in motion and moving forward, I think, in a very positive direction. And uh, thanks to what's been going on with this, uh, this study from RDG, it's like getting more more pictures uh, and, and more more being able to vision what what's in the site and and as we move forward from here with the regional playground and those kind of things uh, is only going to get more and more refined. So in conclusion, our situation is not unique. This this is Maggie Daly Park in Chicago had a sixty million dollar price tag and five million dollars of capital funds were applied to this project. We've got $5 million of capital funds. <laughs> they were leveraged, though, by these generous donators, by public-private partnerships. We need to get people like this to the table to make it happen, and it'll become reality. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Comments? I think we just kind of had the discussion going on. I like that that format yeah. that pretty well. So I think we pretty much, yeah. I think we tapped out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of would tend well, to we, agree. We appreciate the audience. We appreciate what you guys do, and know that you're going to be at the table going forward. Right. And uh, please know that uh, we're here when you want us to be. So pick up the phone. Uh, we we want to be partners in this. And to Zach's point well aware that this is not happening by any one individual group. Right. We're excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, Tim, Kyle, Zach. Do you have anything else? From the public to know. Hmm? Do we have any public with comment? Yeah, sure. Come, Come on, on up, up and join us. Yeah, Come sit on at the up. table with us. Hello. 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 I'm new at Old Faith this year. My name's Adriana. I'm as mayor of the fifth faith board. Um, I had a lot of questions. Uh, not a lot, I guess, but uh, some comments to you and some concerns. Um, so one with the permeable or porous parking lots that like the food trucks will be on. That's not permeable. It's not permeable. No. It doesn't work in a flood zone. Uh, could it just be saturated all the time? Or? It, uh, we have uh, vial soils down at, um, we can test down at um, the stadium, and uh, just the amount of inundation. It, it, it's a hassle from a maintenance perspective, and the, the groundwater is already high. It, it's not a... It, it pushes the tables up and down. Yeah, they yeah. just never stay the same. It, it's a great theoretical idea. Not, not, not in yeah. water conditions. When the realities of the site, yeah. The DDP is working permeable papers into our um, people that go forward on street sweeps um, for the redo and everything with Zach's Bridge is involved on the water and flood zone. Hmm. So all of the stuff that they remove at that was taken in for a survey uh, two, three months ago, I think. Okay. So, so those new pilots, so assuming that the pilots go there, um, that'll be saw, the yeah, standard okay. going forward. Okay. Yeah. Other thing, I'm kind of concerned about that, the six frames. I know that there were some people who were in favor of that. Um, I personally kind of view it as uh, another eyesore like the casino was. Personally, I think that the programmable like water feature would be great. Um, just not right big in the center, kind of similar to how the casino was. I like the, the smooth, it, you know, I, I don't really want like a big obstruction like that, personally. Another thing with the art and the sculptures and stuff, I would uh, suggest a push for that kind of just be a little more local if we could kind of try to find local artists instead of someone somewhere else. The plant palettes, um, just you guys were kind of talking about realigning perspectives, changing perception and stuff like that. I think that could go, the plant palette um, choice could go a long way and that. Make the plant.
enhance how it can be like edible, um, interactive, something like that, where there can be signage, um, kids could learn, parents too, you know, they could read what, what the signs say of what the trees and shrubs and plants are. Um, so I would like for it to kind of be a little practical, um, edible plants as well as possible. With signage. Um, and then kind of we were a little bit talking about signage. Um, I don't know what kind of this area for what you guys are doing as early businesses, but um, just as much as we can upcycle materials as possible, I think that would be great. Um, so there's a piece of collab at the foot of the Centennial here on the Davenport side. Um, it's a cool maker space. They have like a 3D printer, laser engraver type thing also. Um, so you could essentially take uh, pieces of sheet metal, wood, things like that down there to the collab for 30 bucks a month um, and just pay for your materials and you can just engrave as many things as possible. So that, I think it'd be cool uh, to kind of just use our facilities and use our resources as much as possible. So from artistry to worker space to obtaining the plants. We've got a lot of local places where you can also source the plants from, kind of just putting that money back into our community, keeping it community oriented, um, making our community feel like they also are, you know, valued for the things that they contribute. Um, and then my last thing I think, oh, I got another one too. Uh, I just like to know the RFPs that Dee, I believe you mentioned, is that about constructing new buildings or just like existing buildings? Um, it could be a lease space. We, we would have an opening and no one has come to, to lease it. And so we could put out a proposal for the space. So it's it's almost anything that we do. It's just the process of it. Okay. So like of existing buildings or, or constructing new buildings? Um, you It wouldn't be constructing okay. new buildings. Oh, sorry, I have a couple more. <laughs> uh, the terraforming, I know that we have like the Viking cruise line. Is that is that a go, the Viking cruise line? Mm -hmm. Not yet? Not yet. No, 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 no. 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 That, that takes a literal act of Congress. That takes a long, it's a long <laughs> way away. Is that good? Although, not probably happening. No, probably not. No. Okay. Um, um, for a while. Okay. I just wanted to think, you know, think ahead. There's a domestic that. cruise line I've been seeing. I don't know if we have any contact or, or uh, outreach to them. Well, I mean, that's, they stop at Oneida. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. they're stopping already. It, got I, was, I didn't recognize the name. They've got contracts that Decker Plane and Vetco already. Do they? Then there's that. I mean, they're, they're, they're ready to go there. What's that company? It's American, American touring something or other, or American cruise lines. Or is that one like of that. is that one of those? Is that one of uh, ones? So Oneida, American cruise lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Only uh, ships uh, flagged in the United States may sail on the inland waterways of the United States. Yeah. It's a very old law. Yeah. And I guess my last thing is uh, about the. Arsenal, I was kind of unclear, is it the bridge being painted? Uh, what's being painted with the arsenal? The dam. Sounds like the dam. The dam. She's asking about the, Swoboda. The, what, are they painting? what are they painting? Oh, Swoboda, the what are they painting? The lock and dam and the bridge. Right. I, I don't know and the bridge? particular specs because it's a core project. Oh, okay, so yeah, that was my other question. We're just yeah, we're being uh, good neighbors. Okay. Yeah. So we're being we're, good we're neighbors. We're making money off of them because they have to have uh, something on the land. Okay, so yeah. The so Boda. If, you, if you look at the dam, there's there's a structure comes all the way along the upstream side. Sure. On top of it's a mobile crane up there, and that's used to pick gates and bulkheads, and that's the structure we're going to paint. Okay. It needs painting bad. Yeah. Thank you. Just making sure we weren't paying for that. <laughs> No, no, we're earning from that. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Um, oh, and the trains going over all this water. Um, is there how, how much water can a train go over? <laughs> Do you guys know anything about this that? This doesn't fall under our jurisdiction. Um, there's an explanation on the paper today, though. Okay. I think it was today's paper. They actually push the. They push them instead of pull them. 
They push them from behind. They, they push the train from behind. They go backwards. And then they or... inspect it after each right. time. They're, yeah. yeah. But that's, you know, we're not. But I don't think it's a much. That's not they, a they stop running trains at you know, six inches of water over the tracks. Yeah. It isn't much. Anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So okay, thank you. Nice. Thank you very much. Adriana, thank nice you. to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks for visiting. Is, it, is anybody else? I see anybody else. Sir? Sir, two. Okay. I move we adjourn. Stevie, do you have anything more? No. Uh, well, yeah. Is there a staff? Well, welcome, board? Ryan, to your first meeting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, guess I am going to hand out. I'll second uh, the motion to adjourn. Thanks. All those in favor of adjourn, say aye. 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 Somebody.